welcome to Hannah's heart. So Hannah, she's just one of the women who did struggle with infertility in the Bible. No matter who we are, we can be inspired by the fact that Hannah took her pain to God and God heard her and was with her. So when she was praying at the temple, she had been weeping and not eating and her lips were moving, but her eyes were closed and the priest was like, why are you drunk at the temple? Because <laughs> yeah. it can become an obsession when you want Wanting a child so deeply. And desiring that baby and to be a mama. Every holiday, every Mother's Day. This is not a show that's going to promise you a certain outcome. But this is a show that says, however God answers your cry, we know that He's enough. Hey, I'm Ann. And I'm Kendra. And you are listening to Hannah's Heart on American Family Radio. We'd love for you to connect with us on Facebook, on Instagram, YouTube, um, anywhere you can find a podcast. We try to be there. Or you can also email us at Hannah's Heart at AFA.net. That's right. So today is a second part yes. to our show from last week. If that you aired. missed it, you've got to go back. It was such That's a right. great program. That's right. Well, and you can't listen to today's show without hearing. Yeah. But don't, but don't, <laughs> but don't click away. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So we have two special guests on again. Hannah and her mom are on the phone with us today, and we are talking about snowflake adoptions and how. They play a big role in the snowflake adoption world. So yes. um, go back to that other episode and see what we might be talking about. And just if anyone's listening, just to fill you in really briefly, snowflake adoption is adopting an embryo that was left over from previous IVF cycles. Right. Um, these are babies that otherwise remain in the freezer and don't have um, a future. Right. Um, and... Um, uh, we spoke with Marlene and Hannah, and Marlene was the first woman to ever adopt a snowflake baby right. and conceived and had Hannah. And had Hannah. So that's that's the quick catch-up from last week. That's right. That's right. So, hey, ladies, are y'all there? We are. Yes, thank you for having us. Yes, thank y'all for being on again. We're excited about today's show um, to get to hear even more of what y'all have to share with us. Um, so... This week, we were going to focus more on maybe hearing how y'all are still involved in the snowflake adoption world, I guess, how, you know, events that you might have gone to throughout the years and things like that. And I would love to hear more about your book. Sure. Um, so my husband, John, um, is a writer. He has worked for Golf Digest and he's been a sports writer and he's authored, I think, seven books, and oh, so wow. his seventh book, latest book, um, he wrote um, with Hannah, and it's called A Snowflake Named Hannah, Ethics, Faith, and the First Adoption of a Frozen Embryo. Wow. And as he always says, he wanted to wait until Hannah was old enough to participate in the book in some mm. fashion, so um, he waited, and then um, Hannah actually wrote the foreword to the book, wow. and then he wrote the rest of it. I so love that. he. So, so it kind of is divided into three parts. It kind of tells our personal story at the beginning. The middle part is kind of our political, um, uh, well, what we kind of got thrown into with, uh, with the whole embryonic stem cell research mm. um, issue in the 2001 and President Bush and a bunch of us snowflake families going to the White House for his first veto. Um, and then the third part of the book is other snowflake family stories. Mm. Wow. So we want to talk about all of that. <laughs> yeah. <of that. laughs> Yeah, that's so good. So, Hannah, we had mentioned you um, reading the first part of the forward. Would you mind doing that for us today? Sure, I would love to. So, the first part of the forward goes as follows. Um, my adoption story was never a secret to me. Uh, I was the first adopted frozen embryo, and I was made aware of it at a very early age. I knew that I was one of 20 frozen embryos adopted from my placing family and that my mom is both my birth mom and my adopted mom, though I did not necessarily understand what that meant initially. Explaining embryo adoption to an adult, let alone a young child, isn't easy. My mom, being the creative individual she is, used kid-appropriate analogies with me. For instance, she took two packets of seeds, carrot and pumpkin, and put them in the freezer. We took them out of the freezer during the correct planting season. She and I carefully counted out 20 seeds from the packet, representing the 20 embryos that my parents had adopted. We then planted them in an egg carton to grow. Not all of the seeds sprouted, just like not all the embryos survived the thaw. 
we eventually transferred the remaining seedlings into the garden, and not all of the plants survived. Again, this represents um, how not all the embryos survived once they were transferred into my mom. My mom explained that sh- this was how she and my dad adopted 19 siblings in me as frozen seeds. She also said there was no guarantee that all 20 of the embryos would survive the freeze, the thaw, and the transfer. She said, you were adopted as a seed and put into my mommy's tummy to grow. So that's just a little taste of the forward. I don't want to spoil it all, but... <laughs> Um, it was really exciting to write it with um, my dad and as I was finishing up college as an undergrad. Mm. Wow. So statistically, you're really, that's a creative way of making us aware of how harsh um, some of the, the thawing and, and unthawing process is with IVF. Mm-hmm. Is exactly. that something you think a lot of believers are not aware of? Oh, definitely. Um, I, I know sure. a lot of, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Hannah. Yeah, I'm not sure how... Oh, I'm sorry. It's Marlene. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much um, doctors tell them about mm. that. Right. I, I feel like it can end up being something that if you don't know, you know, what... How do you even look into that? Like, right. how do you know what to research, what, what even verbiage to use to see what you're looking for when you're looking into this type of thing. And the science is always um, progressing and changing, too. So this was, um, uh, you're how old, Hannah? I'm 23. 23. So this was 23 years ago. Right. Um, it's it's still, I believe, um, pretty harsh on embryos, but they do things a lot differently today. And I would say for couples that are maybe considering fertility um, treatments, <laughs> ask a lot of questions right. and make sure that you understand what they're saying. If they if they're using language that you don't understand, it's okay to say what does that mean? Right. What is written <laughs> until you really comprehend what's going on um, because I do think there are more options available for believers now that are life affirming. Um, but you have to find the right clinic, you have to find the right person right. and you have to be willing to do it God's way. Right. So, Hannah, I heard um, from talking to your mom an interesting and just really sweet thing that you thought of. Will you tell us about naming those siblings of yours? Yeah, so actually I write about this in the foreword as well. So we watched the movie Heaven is for Real, and Mm. it's about a young boy named Colton who was explaining to his mother his experience in heaven, and he described the encounter he had with a young girl who he had said was his sister. (laughs) <laughs> and his mom was confused and noted that his sister, Cassie, was seated behind him at a dining room table. And Colton said, no, he had two sisters. You had a baby die in your tummy, didn't you? Oh, wow. And so just that scene in Heaven is for Real really spoke to my mom and I as we watched the movie. And um, I really felt the need to name these little um, boys and girls um, that didn't make it. Mm -hmm. Um, through the freeze and the thaw and the transfer because um, as Colton said that his sister up in heaven didn't have a name Mm -hmm. at the time when he met her and so I felt that it was really important to do so so we ended up naming them um, all 19 of them which actually took a lot of thought and prayer (laughs) um, as a a family um, to really think through what names and how many boys how many girls and just kind of following God and um, what he um, was telling us their names were. Well, I think some people might have a problem with you doing that because it it draws attention to the fact that that is a life. That's a life, right? You know, mm-hmm. and in a way that is, is very convicting where you realize um, these babies are babies. Mm -hmm. If you believe life begins at conception, even if it happens in a Petri dish, then you're responsible for how you treat that, that life. And Marlene, you were telling us um, off air earlier about a a ministry that um, specifically helps um, properly honor and and grieve over embryos who um, did not survive. Can you tell us about that? Yes. So this was a, um, a woman who contacted me and she um, had this organization called Sacred Hearts and they actually contact IVF clinics and ask for the remains of embryos that did not make it. Mm. And they will send a container, you know, to get them and everything. And then they're shipped. Um, I think they have a cemetery plot in Minnesota uh, someplace, but they 
provide a proper burial for these um, these little frozen embryos. Wow. Which I thought, wow, that's such a great idea. I wish that was around, you know, when we had done this because it's something I hadn't thought of, but mm. but she had. So, so yeah, sacred hearts. What a beautiful way to honor those lives. Mm-hmm. I, I don't guess I, I, before you mentioned that, I don't think I had wondered, well, what happens to mm-hmm. those um, embryos, you know, that get used for research and all those different reasons why they might not have survived, um, you know, what to do with those now. So you mentioned um, in your book the political stance, um, and I know that y'all have gone to the White House. Do you mind telling us a little bit about that? Sure. So it actually started in 2001 when the whole embryonic stem cell research issue was at the forefront. And um, so President George Bush had just been elected to office. And so we had actually been asked to come testify before Congress on this issue. Um, so we went and the second snowflake mom with, and dad with their two twin boys who were nine months at the time. Hannah was, oh. um, I believe, two. Mm. And so, and then the director of the Snowflakes program at the time. So we all testified on a panel and um, my diagnosis medical diagnosis of infertility is the only one that offers life to these Mm. frozen embryos. The other diagnosis, you know, these embryos have to die for them. Mm. And so we were there to point out that, um, that there is a purpose for these frozen embryos, that they can be placed for adoption. Mm. And at the time, the scientists were saying that these frozen embryos have no purpose. They're in excess of clinical need. They're going to be destroyed anyway. Let's do research on them. Mm. We actually had saved Hannah's cord stem cells when she was born. So we could truthfully say we weren't against stem cell research, obviously. We were against using our daughter for these, for this research and other, Mm. you know, boys and girls. And so it really highlighted the humanity of what was happening with embryonic stem cell. Did you say you kept her umbilical cord stem cells for research uh purposes? Yes. So her her, uh, cord stem cells. So that is banked. Yeah, so that's Which is a great for alternative for future, right? Gotcha. Exactly. It's and it's her blood, so it's gotcha. her DNA, mm. and so that's there for her lifetime, you know. And so we we pay a yearly fee for that, and should she ever need to access it, it's there. Um, but then in future years, um, we went and lobbied congressmen and mm. and senators on two different occasions with other snowflake families, and. Um, and then uh, that was very powerful, you know, to do that, to have Hannah with us. And yeah. she could be the face, as these other snowflakes are, of this research that you want to do. You know, here's what, you know, here's here's what's happening <laughs> to these mm. children. They're growing up, you know. Uh, and then uh, in 2006, we actually uh, went again with other snowflake families and stood behind President Bush for his first veto when he we stood on the dais with him. And he turned to Hannah and the other Snowflake children and said, these children are not spare parts, and mm. I'm not going to use federal funding for this research. Mm. Wow. Now, since then, things have changed politically and, you know, with research. But to date, there still has been no zero cures from embryonic stem cell, and the all the cures are coming from adult stem cell, from using your own stem cells. And you think about it, you know, would God really want... Mm-hmm you to use his children for this research? No, right, right. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. and yet there's so, so much pressure uh, for the embryonic stem cell research. And yet the science doesn't the, even back no, that up yeah. to be effective. No, <laughs> no. And now all you hear about is stem cell research. They don't even clarify which one it is, but it's mm. adult stem cell when they, you know, it's the cures wow. coming from that. So, mm-hmm. wow. so that is I think they do that to confuse people. <laughs> Can yeah. you tell me about the so, the problem that's being created of there being an excess number of um, frozen embryos? Like, is it something that a lot of fertility clinics are overrun with? Has it, in the last 23 years, has the, the demand increased? So when I testified before Congress, the estimate was 188,000 frozen embryos that remain. Wow. wow. Um, it's up to about a million now. What? In this country alone. Yeah. A so, million? Um, mm-hmm. Man. So I'm telling you, if you want to adopt, I would contact Nightlight because I think they have embryos that need, they need have boys and girls that need homes. It's not wow. maybe m- more like a domestic program where you'd have to wait, you know, for a newborn. 
um, you know, you could get going right away. So, wow. so prayerfully consider that. Marlene, did you have any questions from family or church members that like thought, man, this is really weird or looked at you funny when you initially began this journey? Uh, you know, well, I guess you had to explain what an embryo is. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, we didn't adopt sperm. Right, <laughs> no, right. we didn't adopt eggs, <laughs> you know. And so I really had to explain what a, what a, an embryo is and how they get to be frozen embryos and why there is this need, you know, to adopt them. Mm. Um, so... That's very important and helpful. And we encourage you guys to listen to the previous episode where we do talk about some of the differences because it's it's very easy when you get into all of these scientific terms to um, get confused. In fact, a lot of times they will refer to eggs, uh, embryos as eggs. <laughs> and it's, um, and it's that's not, that. not the same. Not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. Um, okay, so we talked about... Obviously, this is a growing thing. You know, people are finding it, finding out what that means. What are some of the newest numbers that are out there to let us know? You know, like adoption numbers. Yeah, yeah. So I can only quote from Nightlight Christian Adoption. There's been other organizations, like I said, that do not uh, or that do a a type of embryo adoption, but they're not adoption agencies, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. So, um, but all of them are saving lives. Um, but again, you know, we have an open adoption. Um, Hannah's, um, you know, we've, we've um, been to, Hannah's been to Disneyland with her genetic siblings. Um, she's on social media with them. And so, um, you know, it's a very nice relationship. But through Snowflakes, there's been 925 babies born so wow. far. Um, by the end of this year, um, they expect 990 babies to be born. Um, and in January of next year, they're going to celebrate the birth of their 1000th baby. Wow. Um, oh my goodness. That gives me yeah. chills. So, so like I said, at the beginning, it was slower moving because nobody knew about it. Like I said, Hannah was, uh, over two years old and the, or 21 months old and the second and third babies were born. So there's 21 months difference between wow. Hannah and the second and third. So that's, it's grown exponentially. Um, last year, um, there were 101 snowflake babies born, which was a record year for them. But this year, uh, God willing, they will expect 121 babies born. Wow. And since 1998, um, 2,000 families have placed over 8,000 embryos for adoption through wow. snowflakes. Wow. So some of those. That's just a are, praise the know, Lord. Still, exactly. Some of those are still waiting, you know, to be adopted. But you can tell how many, you know, don't survive the thaw, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So freezing and thawing kills children. So, you know, Hannah is a miracle Survivor. that she's yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long, yeah. Hannah, how long were you frozen? I was frozen for two years. That's crazy. You're like a modern day Captain America. <laughs> That's so crazy. And y'all mentioned um, some babies, the longest one that was frozen that we know of it was frozen for how long yeah it was um it was frozen for 26 years so so that was not through nightlight but that was another baby that was born and she actually um broke the record of her sister who i think had been frozen for 24 years wow Wow. so they, they came from the same family any medical um concerns that hannah after you um were born any any long lasting medical concerns that come from snowflake adoption? No, none that I've experienced so far. So a miracle baby that's no, completely nothing. healthy. And and I don't know of any that mm. have issues be, because of the fact they were frozen. You I know gotcha. the the main the main issue is not surviving the thaw. I gotcha. The freeze and the thaw. Yeah. I wanted to mention, too, about the name Snowflakes, because it's kind of a neat story of how that mm. came to be, if I can. Yes, yeah, um, we wanted We wanted to thank our attorney, and uh, he did all this for free, you know, looking into this, how would you adopt an embryo, and, how, you know, all that. Um, we, of course, had to pay for the home study and all that, but um, we took him to a play in San Diego. Um, it was a Christian play at the Hotel Del Coronado, and it was Christmas time, and so this actress said, she said this line, how she... Miss the snow because in San Diego you don't have snow at Christmas. And she was from Germany, 
And she said, in the intricate design of each flake of snow, we find the creator reflecting the individual human heart. Mm. And she touched a child on the face. And my, my attorney and I looked at each other, <laughs> and at intermission, he goes, we now have the name of our new program. <laughs> and we, again, felt that was a God thing of how that name just yes. was so perfect. Yeah. So chills, I got chills. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nightlight has trademarked and registered that name, mm. um, Snowflakes, um, for frozen embryos that are through Nightlight Christian Adoptions. Wow. And so many people um, refer to that just for a frozen embryo or for going through one of these other programs, but mm. that's not the case. So wow. when you hear 925 Snowflakes babies, those are mm. the ones that are through wow. Nightlight. So Marlene, what kind of couple might be a good candidate to consider snowflake adoption? Uh, well, um, you know, a uh, married couple um, and I, I, you know, desiring to have children and desiring to be pregnant and mm-hmm. carry their own adopted child, which I got to tell you is a dream come true for women. Mm-hmm. I mean, this yeah. is a women's, women's issue that is hugely overlooked. Yeah. I remember uh, desiring that myself. With, yeah. And this is, resonates with every snowflake mom I've talked to who hasn't already maybe had biological children, but that we could carry and give birth to our own adopted child was a dream come true. Mm-hmm. I experienced everything. I, you know, I breastfed Hannah afterwards I, and I relished every moment mm-hmm. of everything, you know, wow. even the nausea. <laughs> 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 I feel like when you struggle with infertility, those things that come about, I'm not saying it, it's just a joy to deal with all the mm-hmm. time when you don't feel good and you're so tired, but I feel like those are signs of just thankfulness. You know, it reminded me to be thankful for what my body was experiencing because I remember a time when I told my husband, I, I just don't think, you know, it's ever going to come to that point that I feel little kicks in my belly mm-hmm. and things like that. And, um, so yeah, we you know we have our miracle baby girl now, and we didn't do this, but um, it's definitely not for sure yeah. that we will be able to experience that again yeah. without further help or p- uh, the possibility of doing this. So yeah, well, and the it, accessibility is such a great factor. Sure, I mean, if, yeah. if there's a million snowflake babies waiting to be adopted, um, there are many couples that desire to adopt a baby so that they can experience every stage mm-hmm. of life. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, the waiting lists for babies right. are well, so long. That bond. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you cannot have that with an adopted child. Sure. But that bond, you know, those hormones that are released at mm-hmm. birth, you know, for that mother and baby, um, that's a way for you to still be able to experience that. Um, and then also giving a child life that might not have gotten this opportunity. There's so many unique ways that God tells a uh, couple stories. And this one is one of the most unique I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the neat things, too, about Snowflakes is we have a great support group of us Snowflake adoptive moms across the country. And so Mm. um, we just, you know, we just um, communicate with each other. Hannah's been to birthday parties of other snowflakes. We've been to baby showers and, um, you know, we help each other out, you know, Uh, especially for the new moms. um, We try to partner with them and, you know, answer questions, uh, things like that. And I know um, some of the families don't live close to a nightlight to go to some of those opportunities like the picnics and the galas and things like that. So, they asked if Hannah could be a pen pal. Love so she it. was a pen pal mm-hmm. with, with a couple of the Snowflake girls for a while. Mm. Well, Hannah, I would love um, to have you close us out in prayer and pray. Um, there's a lot of Snowflake babies waiting to be adopted. Would you pray for maybe God to move on some hearts of our listeners to consider adopting them? I would be happy to. Father God, we come humbly before you today. Um, with just hearts open to this type of adoption and just um, seeking hearts that are open to adopt and have um, a family of their own and saving human lives. And so we just ask that the right families will be brought towards this program at Nightlight and um, that they will love and cherish them and that lives will be saved in the process, Mm -hmm. Lord, and that you have a family picked out for each one of them. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hannah, real quick, what are you doing in life? Are you a student? Are you any any idea of what direction God's taking your life at this point? 
Sure. I'm in my second year of my master's of social work program wow. at Baylor University. Wow. Um, and I am wanting to do adoption counseling eventually. Um, so I'm really excited to pursue that in the near future. Amen. Clear that God had a plan for your precious, precious life. <laughs> That's right. Thank mm-hmm. you, ladies, Thank for you. being on and also for all the work that y'all are doing um, with this process. I mean, this is literally changing lives. So and we saving just, them. <laughs> and saving them, right. Well, we look forward Thank to you. hearing from y'all from again, and just thank you again for being on. That's right. And give thank us you. one more time that website if people want to um, to consider Snowflake Adoption. It's uh, snowflakes.org. Snowflake.org. So pray about it and keep listening to Hannah's Heart on American Family Radio.